Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So it's been a little while, but it's time to get back in the swing of things, making some new tutorials, right? Um, I hope you guys like the new intro slash bumper. I made it in Cinema 4D, After Effects, and Final Cut Pro. Today's tutorial is going to be how to achieve that toy camera effect inside of Photoshop. I'm using version CS6, however, you're going to be able to achieve this in basically any version of uh, Adobe Photoshop. You're just going to have to take note of uh, adjusting the layer mask feather, and I'll talk about that when we get to that point. So first things first, I have an image loaded. I took this picture when I was down in Florida visiting my buddy. We stayed at this hotel in the Keys that had all these plastic or paper mache animals, and this flamingo was one of them. So yeah. <laughs> so let's get started. I've got this image loaded. The first thing we're going to want to do is apply a blur to basically soften the edges a little bit um, because toy cameras don't really have uh, great lenses that take sharp pictures. So I'll go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. I'm going to set the radius, I don't know, 1.5, something like that, just enough to soften it, maybe even 1.0 actually. I'll select OK. After doing so, I'm going to want to dial back some of the richness in the colors, and in order to do so, what I can do is colorize the layer with a hue um, and saturation adjustment layer. So I'll go over here to the adjustment layers, click on hue and saturation. I'm going to go ahead and select colorize. The hue that I'm going to apply is going to be this light blue. However, you can uh, feel free to use a green, a yellow, a red, etc. I'm going to go ahead and close it by clicking on this button here, the properties. Um, next, I'm going to dial this back maybe to 30% as far as the opacity is concerned. I'll show you a before and after. You'll notice how it dumbs the colors down just a little bit, right? The next thing that's pretty characteristic of a toy camera are light leaks. So in order to fake the light leaks, I'm going to create a new layer by clicking here. Alternatively, I could have went up to the layer menu, selected new, and then layer. After creating this new layer, I'm going to select my brush. I'm going to come over here to my color palette, and I'm going to select the red. You can pick whatever colors you want, um, but for this example, I'm going to use red for one of the lightly colors. I'm going to go ahead and click here in the middle of the image. The reason I'm doing that is I'm using a soft brush, and I don't want the edges to be hard. If I had clicked here and I made copies and moved it around, it would have hard edges. I'll select the Move tool by pressing V on my keyboard or clicking here. Then I'm going to go ahead and move this lightly down to the corner, somewhere around here. Now when I press Option on my keyboard, you'll notice that the arrows change to a duplication arrow. When I click and I drag, it's going to make a copy of that layer. And I'm going to do that a couple times to click and drag and make copies of this light leak throughout the image. Maybe something to that effect. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer by clicking on the layer icon here. I'm going to change my color from red and um, let's select some type of blue. So I'll go ahead again, select the B for the brush tool. I'll click somewhere in the middle of my image, press V to select the move tool, and then I'm going to drag this up to the top corner. Now I'm going to press option on my keyboard to make a copy by clicking and dragging. And again, just make a couple copies and place them throughout my scene. After selecting all of these, what I can do with the top layer selected, scroll down until I see the last uh, light leak or brush stroke layer, press shift on my keyboard and click, and now it's selected all those layers as you can see. If I press command E or control E on a PC, I can uh, merge these layers. Alternatively, I can go up to this menu, flyout menu here, and go down to merge layers. After doing so, you'll notice that's happened here. Next, we wanna change the blend mode from normal to color. When we do so, it will make the colors interact with our layer differently. We're going to want to dial this back maybe to 30, maybe 35% as far as the light leaks are concerned. Somewhere around there. Eyeing it to see what looks good, you know, for your particular image. Next, you'll notice that you can really see the brush strokes or the brush dots. So in order to fix that, what we can do is go up to Filter, select Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. We can apply maybe 175, somewhere thereabouts. It's really going to um, get rid of the detail of the edges of the brush and make this kind of fit more inside of our picture. So that's looking pretty good. Here's a before and after as I toggle the visibility of this layer on and off. All right, so looking good. Next, I'm going to select the background layer. I'm going to press Command-J on my keyboard to duplicate that layer, and I'm going to click and drag it up to the top. So now you can see a before and after what's happened so far. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to use this layer to create a vignette. And to create this vignette, instead of using a black, uh, a black vignette, I'm going to use the colors within the image. 
And uh, what I want to do here is with this image uh, or with this layer selected, I want to press Command U on my keyboard or go up to Image, Adjustments and Hue Saturation. When I do so, I'm going to set the saturation, I don't know, maybe I think 80 is what I used when I first set this up. And then I'm going to set the dark, uh, lightness to maybe minus 75, somewhere around there. You'll notice that this looks pretty styling, right? Next, I'm going to go ahead and select the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and this is going to be the size of my uh, vignette. I can press the space bar while still holding my mouse button down to reposition the marquee. To basically looking somewhere where I have the top, bottom, left and right all evenly spaced, right? So now that it's all evenly spaced, I'm going to go over here to the layer palette. I'm going to go over here to the layer mask. I'm going to press option on my keyboard or alt and click on the layer mask and it's going to create a mask based on the selection that I had. We'll notice that this has a pretty hard edge. If you have CS4 and above, you can just double click on the layer mask itself. It will bring up the properties and allow you to adjust the feather. I'm going to set this maybe to 200 pixels. If you did not have CS4 and above, what you could do is select the uh, layer mask itself, go up to filter, blur and Gaussian blur and you can apply a blur to this to achieve the same effect. Next, I'm going to dial the opacity back maybe to 70%. I'll see a before and after with this vignette. So looking pretty good. Alternatively, if I wanted to brighten my image because it's become darkened and a little bit flat looking, I can press command on my keyboard while clicking on the vignette. And what this is going to do is select that selection. I'll press command shift I to inverse my selection. Now by selecting on, um, let's see, by selecting on this background layer, uh, I can select the curves adjustment layer and with that selection already set it applied it to the layer mask here and if I click and I drag up you'll notice I can over exaggerate it really quickly you can notice that I can just brighten that part of the image just a tad I'll go ahead and close the properties of this I'll toggle this on and off just a slight adjustment just to make the middle pop just a little extra Guys, I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm out.